This is Elite Recipe Source on the cutting edge of culinary evolution, doing another deep dive here, the second installment in a series on Skyline Chili's secret recipe and how to reverse engineer it, bringing you the very latest research from the ERS laboratory. So what's ERS been doing the last couple weeks? Well, I've been working on cracking that code. I was able to get my hands on some frozen Skyline chili, which from my experience is usually better than the canned stuff, even though the ingredient list is exactly the same. So I've been doing some taste comparisons between my homemade batches and the frozen Skyline, and they're extremely close. I'm, I'm partial to mine, and I think mine tastes more like the restaurant stuff. The frozen Skyline was good, really good, don't get me wrong, but I think you're better off doing homemade stuff if you're trying to recreate the restaurant style experience. Compared with my batch, the frozen Skyline have more of a red had more of a red peppery taste, almost like Old Bay seasoning, which is not something I remember from the restaurant experience. Maybe something to do with the garlic and the paprika holding on to more of their flavor than the allspice and the cinnamon over long periods of time being uh, stored frozen. Now, the store that my Frozen Skyline came from is about 400 miles from Cincinnati, Ohio, where the, the, the one single factory making Skyline Chili is located. So for now, let's, let's, uh, let's get onto the hands-on work of, of using this batch of Frozen Skyline to see what we can learn in formulating copycat recipes. Now, the first thing I want to show you is these, these black specks here. This stuff has got to be allspice. The only things that have black specks like this so far as spices that I know of are, are black pepper and allspice. Cloves, when ground, uh, will be more of a brown color when mixed into a liquid and and black pepper is is going to have very few uh, relatively few black specks and most of the grinds are actually going to be a white or off-white color because it's only the skin on the outside of the black peppercorn that's actually black the rest of the inside is going to be the white or off-white color and so if those black specks you see in a spoon of Skyline chili, if those were black pepper, then it would be so much pepper that all you'd taste in the chili would be the black pepper. And so this this particular black chunk in this in this spoonful here, this pretty much gives away the game that it's allspice. An allspice berry when ground is gonna be pretty much all black. So it's gotta be allspice you're seeing in the real deal Skyline. If if I'm missing something here, if if there's some obscure, some exotic spice that looks like this when it's ground and mixed up into and, and, and put into a liquid, let me know in the comments, but I'm 99% sure that this stuff is allspice. The second major clue we can get from looking at a batch of Skyline, where I'm going with the title of this video, this is, I believe, another secret ingredient hiding in plain sight, is this stuff right here. And I'm, I'm removing it right here with some chopsticks. I, I, I rinsed it off and put it on a plate and, and got some, some footage of it here. It looks like some kind of vein or like a membrane uh, of some kind of membrane kind of material. And I, I remember seeing this stuff in Skyline batches, whether it's canned or in the restaurant or frozen or whatever. I remember seeing this stuff all the time in Skyline Chili uh, restaurants even a, a, as a kid uh, many years ago. And just thinking, you know, at the time, it's just like, oh, pieces of vein that made their way into the ground meat in the chili. And I never really thought much of it. But since I began this, this mission to recreate Skyline Chili using the ingredient list and using all of the available information, it occurred to me that regular ground meat just doesn't have this veiny kind of stuff going on. So what is going on here? Well, first let's look at what information is out there publicly. And I'll refer uh, again to this article in industrytoday.com and there'll, there'll be a link in the description. It says, the manufacturing process starts with 100,000 pounds of beef delivered fresh each week from North Carolina where specially managed herds are slaughtered and packaged to Skyline specifications. Skyline grinds the beef in 500 pound stainless steel vats using a proprietary pressurized air process that's designed to extract tiny bits of bone that are present even in certified boneless meat. 
Okay, certified boneless meat. That's kind of a weird term. I've eaten a lot of ground meat, bought a lot of ground meat, and worked in a restaurant and hotel kitchens. I've been around military food and, and even prison food. And I've done home butchery with deer meat and things like that and ground a good deal of meat through my KitchenAid stand mixer attachment grinder. And I have never encountered bone in ground meat from large mammals, even even deer that have had a lot of shot damage and, and bones broken into the meat from bullets or buckshot. buckshot. And I mean, you, you, you just cut around that stuff and move on and it's not too hard to keep that stuff out of your ground meat. Birds and birdshot, that's a little different. But anyway, with Skyline, we're talking cows that are killed and butchered professionally in a factory environment. There's no reason to have bone in there in the first place. And so there's this proprietary pressurized air process and certified ground meat stuff. And it sounds a little bit out of place. Why the need for a proprietary special process with air pressure? This is, this is really weird right here. So anyway, let me go on a little bit in this article here. Uh, it next says that when the grinding is complete, automated hoist dump the contents of the vats into 3,000 pound steam jacketed kettles where the four hour cooking process begins according to a family recipe that's been used for decades. This kind of suggests that the family recipe begins after the meat is ground. My belief, however, which I'm about to provide evidence for, is that the secret family recipe begins before that. The secret family recipe begins when the meat is ground, not after it's ground. This stuff here, this veiny, this kind of membrane-y stuff, this looks like pieces of heart. Uh, especially with the piece with the wood grain pattern going on here. The piece at the top right, uh, it had little raised dots on it, maybe from a beef heart, maybe from something else like a lung or a tongue or a kidney or something. But my theory so far on this stuff is that most of it is heart. Bottom line, there is a good deal of some organ meat, some offcuts going on in Skyline. And if you remember from my Getta recipe video, which was based off the Gleer's Getta, another all-star of Cincinnati cuisine, the heart meat is a big flavor component of that. So it's not too far of a stretch to to conjecture that it's 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 very likely a good compo a, a good deal of Skyline's flavor as well. So I've been using heart in my last couple of batches of homemade Skyline, and it's turned out pretty good. And I would I would recommend it. And the price of a beef heart is really cheap at what I got here, which is $1.58 a pound. Even, even if you're only buying a little bit of it, just one, uh, just, just a couple pounds or less of it. And so it, it, it is a tough cut of meat, uh, even if you cut out a lot of, lot of the uh, silver skin and stuff like that. There are some cooking videos out there that will say you can clean and cut a heart the way, the way you do a steak and you can eat it like a steak, but that has just not been my experience. A $2 steak is going to be tough any way you slice it. The best uses for heart, which is still a very economical and underappreciated cut, are going to be in recipes that call for ground heart to be cooked low and slow, like Geta and like Skyline. So, like I said, I did a couple of batches with the heart. One batch, the, uh, the, the meat was about half heart and half regular ground beef. The other batch had only about 10 to 20 percent of the beef, of, of the meat being heart. So, from my experience, what I would recommend would be to have about one third of your, of your beef, of your meat in your Skyline recipe. Be, uh, be from the heart. So the footage you're seeing here is from a scaled up recipe doing about six pounds of meat, about one of which was beef heart and the rest was a mix of deer meat and really, really fatty ground pork. 
uh, kind of going for a simulation of ground meat as I, uh, ground beef as I didn't have any ground beef. It was a little on the lean side and it's always going to be better with ground beef than with the deer meat and pork substitute, but the little bit of beef heart in there plus the yeast still added enough of a, it added enough of a beefy flavor to where I would put this batch, I would still put this batch up against uh, the canned or frozen stuff any day. And you too can make a homemade Skyline copycat that'll rival the real thing. Just make sure you also watch the first video in this series and take notes. This is the source, Elite Recipe Source, and if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe so you can keep up with the latest innovations coming out of the ERS lab.